Hello and welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to discuss the next few questions of the October November 2019 970933 questions 5th, 6th, 7th. So, here's the question number 5th. By stretch, sketching a suitable pair of graphs, show that the equation this ln x plus 2 is equal to 4e raised to the power minus x has exactly one real root. So, if we draw the two pair of graphs, then we will see if they intersect at only one point, it means they have exactly one real roots. So, we can see from here the uh, graphs we are going to plot that is y is equal to ln x plus 2 and right hand side another graph that is y is equal to 4 e raised to the power minus x. So, we are going to draw these two graph and we know the shape of this graph the graph of uh, ln x is going to be like this and e raised to the power minus x is there so the graph would be like this and they will meet at only one point at which I can we can see it will if we we'll draw it together it will meet somewhere here so that is why exactly one real root so let me plot it here so here is the graph of y is equal to ln x plus 2 and this is the graph of y is equal to 4 e raised to the power minus x and since it is 4 and when x is equal to when x is equal to 0 so of course it would be 0 and y is equal to 4 it which will be intersecting at 4 and then uh, if it is y is equal to ln x plus 2 we know that ln x goes like this from here which passes through x axis at 1 and since it is x plus 2 so it is like f of x plus 2 which is a translation in the horizontal line uh, a horizontal translation with the quantity minus 2 that's why it translated towards this so and we can see since it is intersect at only one points that's why it has only one real root let's do the next question of this second part show by calculation that this root lies between x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 1.5 so, since we know it is given at as ln x plus 2 is equal to 4 e raised to the power minus x. So, out of this we are going to make a function and we can make the function as f of x is equal to ln x plus 2 minus 4 e raised to the power minus x. Now, if this root, this, this function has one uh, value at x is equal to 1 as positive and this as negative or vice versa then we can see that this has a root between 1 and 1.5. So, let us calculate f of 1 which is ln 1 plus 2 that is 3 minus 4 e raised to the power minus 1 and which we will get from the calculator and it is minus 0 0.3729 and f of 1.5 is ln 1.5 it would be 3.5 minus 4 e raised to the power minus 3.5 uh, it is minus 1.5 and we will get this value as from the calculator of course it is going to be 0 0.3602 and we can decide we can see it is negative and this is positive and hence the root will lie between 1 and 1 1.5 that's it that's it let's do the next part of this question here's the third part use the iterative formula xn plus 1 is equal to ln uh, of 4 over ln xn plus 2 to determine the root correct to two decimal places and give the result of each iteration to four decimal places so from the second part we have just uh, got uh, that and this is of course we got from the first question first part that is ln x plus 2 is equal to uh, 4 times e raised to the power minus x from there we have rearranged to get this iterative formula and from the second part we got that the root lies between 1 and 1.2 so we can take the initial uh, iteration that is x naught as 1.2 and uh, we need to put this value in the calculator and put this value in the answer so that the next value for x1 we have only have to put this formula once in the calculator ln of x naught plus 2 and this value is going to be 
1.23516 so it is 2 because we need to write it till four decimal places and then x2 it is going to be simply by pressing the equality button we will get 1.2258 and all and then and we can write dot 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 and all here and x3 is x3 is 1.22827 and all x4 it is 1.2276 and all so from here we can decide that it is correct till two decimal place it is going to be 0.23 because it is more than 5 so the answer is 1.23 that's the solution or we can say root of this correct to two decimal places so i hope it is clear let's do the next question here's the question number six throughout this question the use of calculator is not permitted uh, complex number with the modulus 1 and argument pi by 3 is denoted by w express w in the form of x plus iota y uh, where x and y are real and exact of course so uh, let's take it as w is equal to x plus iota y so what is the modulus the modulus means square root of x square plus y square that is x square plus y square is 1 square uh, that is one of course and then argument it is in the uh, the argument is tangent of tan inverse of y by x and that is given as pi by 3 so it is from here we can say y over x is tan of pi over 3 and that is root 3 so from here we get y is equal to root 3 of x and from this part we can get it now as x square plus 3x square because it was root so square become 3 and then is equal to 1 or from here we'll get x is equal to plus minus 1 over root 4 that is 2 so when, once we got x value we'll get x y value as well that is root 3 times x and it is plus minus root 3 by 2 so uh, moreover the argument is pi by 3 if the argument is pi by 3 it means it is going to lie in the first quadrant so we will take the w as 1 by 2 plus root 3 by 2 iota so we can write also that it why it is why we are neglecting this minus because argument is pi by 3 so it is in the first quadrant only so that's it let's do the second part of this the complex number 1 plus 2 iota is denoted by u so u is 1 plus 2 iota the complex number v is such that modulus of v is 2 times modulus of u so first of all we will calculate modulus of u from here that is square root of square of 1 plus square of 2 that is square root of 5 and argument of uh, v is argument of u plus pi by 3 so argument of u is tan inverse tan inverse that is argument of u it is tan inverse of 2 2 by 1 that is 2 only so argument of u will get as um, it is going to be tan inverse of 2 plus pi by 3 since we don't have to use the calculator so it's find that where is going to be uh, what is going to be this argument because we can at least find the coordinates of this point on the argon diagram so the sketch and argon diagram showing the point representing u and v single argon diagram we need to sketch so let me draw the axis so here's the axis now it is the real axis and this is the imaginary axis so for u uh, the complex number u it is 1 and 2 iota so 1 and 2 iota is this one so this would be u this is u here and this is u now the modulus is modulus of v is 2 times of this so it is going to be 2 times of modulus of u so if it is root 5 this is root 5 so it would be like extending twice it would be somewhere here 
that is 2 comma 4 so we got this length as the modulus of v and now the argument is this this is the argument of u this is the argument of u and if we add pi by 3 in this then we will get the exact location of the uh, complex number v so if we rotate here by pi by 3 unit that is 63 degree pi by 3 unit then this will this point will come somewhere here and we will get the complex number v so this is the complex number v so that's the sketch of eigen diagram uh, of u and v let's do the next question third part explain why v can be expressed as 2 times u and 2 times uw given hence find v giving you answer in the form of a plus iota b so first of all uh, we'll prove that we know that if two two complex number are same if their magnitudes and arguments are same so first of all we'll prove that their arguments and magnitudes are same so for magnitude if you if you talk about magnitude of uh, sorry modulus of v modulus of v is going to be 2 times of modulus of u it is given and modulus of modulus of uh, w is given as 1 so it's like you can multiply by modulus of w so it means modulus of v is same as modulus of of course 2 is a constant so you can put it in this this so it means modulus of v is equal to modulus of 2 times uv let's talk about argument argument of v is given as from the second part it is given as argument of u plus uh, pi by 3 and we know that since argument of w from the first part it is given that it is pi by 3 so it means it is argument of u plus argument of w and we know that for any uh, for any complex number if you are simply multiplying if you are simply multiplying by any constant so it would be simply enlarging in its extending its modulus but the argument would be same so you can say that it is same as the argument of argument of 2 times u w so it is going to be like if you add these two complex number and then you are multiplying by 2 it is not going to harm the angle you it only extend the that is and enlarge the modulus so it will never harm the argument so that's why it is going to be same argument now we can say that these two vectors are same that's why v can be simply written as 2 u w and now we have u and we have w and u was 1 plus 2 iota and w is 1 over 2 plus root 3 over 2 iota and 2 2 will be cancelled with this so it is 1 plus 2 iota into 1 plus root 3 iota and that is 1 into root 3 iota plus 2 iota plus 2 root 3 iota square and iota square is minus 1 so we become 1 minus 2 root 3 plus 2 plus root 3 iota so that is the v here and where a and b are 1 minus 2 root 3 and 2 plus root 3 respectively I hope it is clear. Let's do the next question. Here's the question number seven. Uh, plane M has the equation this. So since the plane is not there in the syllabus anymore, so we will not discuss this. So let's discuss the next question. Here's the question number eight. The diagram shows the graph of y is equal to sec x for uh, x between x between zero and pi by two uh, using the trapezium rule. So trapezium rule is also not there in the syllabus, so we will not discuss this as well. Let's do the next part of this question. Explain with the reference to the di diagram whether the di trapezium rules gives a, again trapezium rules. So we are not going to do it. Here's the part three of this question. Uh, P is the point on the part of the graph y is equal to sec x. 
for x between pi by 0 to pi by 2 at which the gradient is 2. So, we have y and the gradient is of course at any point it is dy over dx. Uh, by first differentiating this find the x coordinate of p giving your answer correct to 3 decimal places. So, we can say that p is somewhere here and then if you draw the tangent that is uh, uh, we, to, in order to get the gradient then it is the gradient of this tangent is exactly same as the gradient of the curve at that point. So, we need to find the dy over dx first of all and dy over dx we are going to get it by differentiating the 1 over cos x because sec x is 1 over cos x. So, it is like we are going to use the quotient rule. So, denominator square cos square x denominator as it is in differentiation of first uh, numerator that is 0 here minus uh, numerator as it is and denominator is differentiation of dif uh, denominator that is going to be minus sin x because difference uh, with differentiation of cos x is minus sin x. So, it become sin x over cos square x. So, cos square x I will write here only that is 1 minus sin square x. So, that is the differentiation dy over dx. Now, at p at p dy over dx is 2. So, it is like sin x over 1 minus sin square x is equal to 2. So, we will do the cross multiplication. We will get it as sin x is equal to 2 times this. So, 2 minus 2 sin square x. So, let us transfer it to the other side and we will get it as 2 sin square x plus sin x minus 2 is equal to 0. So, it is a quadratic in sin x. So, we will use the quadratic formula to get the value and hence sin x is equal to minus b that is minus 1 plus minus square root of b square that is 1 square minus 4 ac. So, 4 into 2 into 2 is 16 and it is minus. So, it is plus 16 over 2 to the 4. So, it become minus 1 plus minus root 17 over 4 and this value is going to be we know that square root of 16 is 4. So, 17 is of course going to be more than 4. So, if we are taking the value minus if you are taking minus here then it would be minus 1 and minus a quantity which is more than 4. So, it would be uh, more than my like less than minus 1. So, we will not consider minus here. We can calculate also and we can decide but it is ok. We can see it is going to be minus 1 minus root 17 and uh, over 4 which will, which will be less than minus 1. So, of course, sin is not possible. So, we will the only possibility for this is sin x is equal to minus 1 plus root 17 over 4 and that is it is 0. 780776. So, I will write here 8 and next x would be sine inverse of 0 0.7808 and we know that it is between 0 to pi by 2. So, we do not have to calculate for any other value. We need to only calculate from the calculator the one value we got and that is going to be uh, of course, in the radian that is 0 0.8959. So, it is 6 because we need to give the answer till 3 decimal places. So, that is the answer in the radian. Uh, I hope it is clear. And that is it for this uh, this video and we will be, we'll be discussing the next two questions. Till then, thank you so much.